Peeps and welcome back to the channel. Uh, what we're going to do today is continue on with this bucket truck build. Um, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things real quick. One of the things that um, a lot of people would like to see me do this better than I'm doing it. Um, I cur I really don't want to spend five to ten years of my life doing this project. Um, yeah, currently every guru that looked at this turned it down. I'm the only one that was willing to take it on. And uh, basically, if I didn't do this truck, every year goes by, it gets more and more rusty. It probably would never have gotten done. It probably would have been uh, just a rust pile where it, you couldn't save it. Some people think, you know, hey, if I was a collector, I sure wouldn't buy that thing. My answer to that is, you won't own one. Because currently, there's only one other one in the world that's restored, that's known of. There's a lot of them out there, um, a few, not that many actually. There's probably in the range of a dozen or so that uh, exist that are still in operation that are split window. You know, that's a split, split window single cab. As you don't know, split window is the two windows are split in the front. They have the later model ones with the single bay window. There's more of those available because they're not as old. The reason that most of them are gone is because they were used by cities and counties and whatever where they call them in Europe. And when they were done with them, they were done. The vehicles were done. The inside of this treasure chest area had very little protection on it from the factory and they would rust out from the inside out. So inside this area here, inside that door, flip that up inside there, it would rust out from the inside out and then just the whole thing would just collapse. Or they wouldn't meet inspection and they'd sit somewhere for a while possibly if it was lucky enough to do that, most of the time they just went straight to the crusher. Um, and if they sat for somewhere for a while, they look like this one, really rusty. And some of them somehow got to America where they have less restrictions on stuff like this. Um, where in some of the European countries, from what I understand, I don't know all the rules. I've just heard from uh, other people who've lived there and they tell me that um, it's very restrictive for an older vehicle to stay on the road. So it's really uncommon to see one of these together. So just getting this thing together the best way I can. Um, so like I said, on this thing here, this gets covered up with that thing. It doesn't make sense for me to spend a lot of time trying to get everything perfectly square and even and whatever. As long as that basket fits on here, that's all I'm really worried about. So that's all I was doing on this, just so you know. And what I'm going to do on this, as I'm not really sure, I, you know, I really don't want to spend a ton of time on this. I think what I'm going to do is just strip everything off of here. I, I'm not sure. Maybe just skim coat it with Bondo filler and prime it, paint it. And that's about it. I don't know, you know, the gel coat... You know, there's cracks everywhere in it. And I don't know, I, I think they may have never gel coated this when they built it. Because look here, see all the hairs. Um, I'm thinking that they didn't, I don't know if they really had a mold for these. I don't know if they just had a mold and they just did it like they do a boat. And then gel coat it first and then put all the fiberglass in. Or they just put fiberglass in and then just coated it with Bondo. That's what it looks like to me, like they did in this time, in this era. Was um, they just made it with fiberglass and then just coated the whole thing with filler and then sanded it down and painted it. That's what it looks like, and it looks like it's original under here because it's got the original colors, which would have been red and white, and. Um, I don't know if they just shot the red first or the white first and you know but it looks like to me like it was gray primer 
than red than white could have been repainted from the looks of the coats that are on here the colors it it's hard to say this might have been stripped and redone uh, because I could see this is not okay like here's the white and the red and then the orange well it would have never gotten orange like the rest of it's so, right so the first coat would have been either red or white so um hopefully i got you guys in frame um so it, it's hard to say yeah but i'm thinking it just this is original this has never been stripped well i don't know why they would have ever done that maybe it crashed the bucket at some point and they did it then who knows but it looks to me like you know it was never gel coated you know why would it have if they gel, if they gel coated the mold first and then they put this thing in there this here would have gel coat on it wouldn't it that's what I would think this would have gel coat on it um, underneath here it looks like you could see the grinder marks in there you know it almost looks like it wasn't gel coated it was just fiberglass and then they just ground it down and then on the outside where you were gonna see something out here they just like put a coat of filler they had filler in the 60s so it could have been done that way which is kind of odd I mean I don't know how boats were made in the 60s maybe they used filler on them all I don't know and didn't use gel coat I don't know I thought they did but you know, it's just kind of strange. It, why would it have, right here, original fiberglass unless all the gel coat peeled off? I don't know. Hard to say. But I'm thinking I'm, I'm, thinking I'm just going to do something really crude to this uh, and then get it painted, put the stripes on it. Yeah, it's going to crack again. You know, I don't know. That's what I was thinking about. I've been thinking about this for a little while, just trying to figure out ahead what I'm going to do. But I think I'm just going to strip it and we'll just kind of play it by ear figure out what to do with it um, I'm not gonna go crazy on anything on this thing you guys remember your time you cannot get back so whatever you decide to put in your time into you're not gonna get that time back and if you do something for someone else next life or whatever you're not gonna get that back you can't go back and go, well, I think I want those years back that I spent on that. You just can't do it. So keep that in mind. Always on your projects, whatever you're doing, make sure that you don't give away your life when you didn't really want to. Okay, so with that, we're going to keep moving on. I'll talk to you later on the video. All right, so we got our citrus strip on here. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, use our bondo spreader to put it on nice and thick the thicker the better I'm just going to use this to kind of help get some of these layers off and I probably on this I could use a polisher to you know, polish your sander and really get it off quick with that because it's flat it's just going to be everywhere a lot of dust I don't you know I prefer not to breathe as much of it even though you got a mask on you still end up getting some of it in there especially this old lead stuff you know, there's an air fed mask maybe I don't have one so be all right lead usually affects young people more than old just you know uh, if you didn't know that people don't know lead and what the effects of it are it's uh, mostly young folks like I wouldn't want Thomas around while I'm doing this because uh, he could digest it versus an older person it usually won't go through your digestive system so anyway from what I know I'm no expert but I've talked to people who are and that's what they say so Anyway, let's move on.
let this sit for a while with some plastic on it. All right, we got hydraulic workers from all over the world telling me, gotta take these lids off. Let's see if they come off. What do you think is gonna happen? I'm afraid to put too much on it. I might just heat them up a little. Not to sing up the stands, if anything. Or it'll twist this whole bottom and just break it off. Let's try the other one. Apparently, if you take these lids off, this whole housing can come off. So, I don't know if these are steel or aluminum. I think they're steel. Some, some rust right there. I don't know, should I get a pipe? <laughs> Let's try a little bit. All right, place your bets. <laughs> All I could get is a piece of square tubing. Oh, you got a little budge out of it. Something budged. Oh, it's feel like the whole thing, it's twisting here. I can see it. Could you guys see that? I could, I don't know if that's exactly what happened, but. <sighs> Gonna have to do some heating here. There's no way these things are gonna come apart easy. <sighs> Nothing. Well, first try. Guess I'll just uh, I'll clean up around them in the top here. I, I don't know where the threads might be down below, probably. I don't know. And that's what I need really need to clean up is those threads. So I don't know. Let's just uh, come back at this a little bit later. First attempt. Well, check this out. This is a little different than what I thought. It's got snap rings on it. You know, I'm wondering if, like, this outside thing is supposed to slide over that, so I could have to clean up my bite marks there. Maybe you know, loosen up, take these loose here, and then this whole thing slides off. I don't know. Something's weird. I don't know how these things work at all. So, but they have a snap ring. Underneath all that paint, it just globs of paint on there. There's a snap ring on there. I have to just kind of just take the torch and just kind of clean it up a little bit around here. Just to get that paint off. You know, not get it too hot and then do that. I was just going to clean them up and lube it. But, you know, maybe I'll throw some lube on there anyway. It wouldn't hurt anything. And then I think this whole outside might slide off of that shaft. So I'll just... You know, these little bite marks here, you know, the learning curve, I have no idea how these things come apart, so. But, um, I think that thing comes off of there. So, anyway, I don't know if we'll do this in this video, but I'm just kind of thinking ahead a little bit. Maybe you guys can comment the way through this, so. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later in the video.
All right, so what's on here is only, it looks to me like, I'll bring you guys up close in a second, but there's only yellow and white. So I'll show you up close here. Let's take a look. So you can see there, so this thing was painted white originally. Didn't have any anything else on it. I think that's what I'll do to, I'll paint it white. So in the process of stripping this, I've been kind of looking at here. If you can see, there was red here, then there's a white stripe. And they painted it all red first, so. And it was three and three quarters, or is that 95 millimeters? wide so whatever three and three quarters stripes so i don't know say four inch stripes or whatever it had and if you can kind of see i guess you can kind of see that can't you so yeah it just they just went straight up and down over the whole thing and then later on you can see you can see in the paint where they had done them at an angle but that's not original this is original the straight stripes going all the way down all the whole thing and I guess maybe they changed the laws as time went on and they made them go angular I don't know but it had angular stripes in the back later in the early days it had just straight and up and down ones that's what we're going with so we'll bring that we'll see you later on that one it's gonna be a little while before we get to it but that's what we're gonna do Alright, well it's getting pretty dark, um, you can see the sun, you'll be right there, is gone. I got a lot of accelerator in this, so it should still dry, no problem. Uh, this Tamco is really pretty good. When you hit it with accelerator, this is actually the slow hardener. You hit the slow hardener with the accelerator and it dries super fast. So it's not really extremely cold right now either, which that wouldn't be the greatest, but you know, a lot of times if you paint something that's outside overnight and it's too cold, the dew will kind of dull the paint. But I haven't had that problem yet with Tamco. So just so you know, it's pretty good stuff. So this should harden up like in about 30 minutes. And this frame's pretty well strong and protected. Uh, I'm gonna paint this tomorrow. I've got different paint for that. I'm just gonna paint it white because that's what it was originally. So I'm just gonna tape it off right here and cover that thing up there and just spray it right where it is. It's, I was trying to figure out how to hang it up and it's kind of hard, I have to make hangers and put it somewhere, it's kind of big. So 
I'll just do it right there. Just paint that sucker white, put some clear on it to make it last. And if I think it goes the other way, so maybe if I put it on the other way, eventually I'll. I was thinking maybe get some Velcro or some uh, Velcro. <laughs> um, that uh, grip tape or something like that on there. Put it on there. Be kind of cool to keep it from wearing off when you walk in and out of the thing. Be pretty neat. Anyway, we'll move forward a little bit more on this. Maybe we'll do a little more of this thing over here and see what happens. So I'll just keep moving. I got this stuff coming off, so keep doing some stuff here, and then we'll wrap this portion of this video up. I don't know, maybe I'll paint this thing. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's that hard to do. Um, I got to take the hardest part's going to be taking these signs off, taking that thing off, and then stripping the inside. Yeah, the inside. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do too much with that. That's going to get painted white, I guess. Be white inside, no stripes in there. Uh, but it's got it's got to get painted with something. It's just there's no way I'm leaving this yellow. So I'm gonna have to paint the inside of it with something. Uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna do much to that, but just give it a coat of epoxy and then shoot it with as a wet bed, and then just shoot it with a coat of white, and whatever. Maybe one coat. That's it. Done. That's all it's going to get. If it fades out or whatever, well, I don't think I'm going to put clear or anything on that. I got some, not, not, I'm not going to use base coat, I'll use single stage or anything, but we'll see. I don't know, whatever I'm in the mood for on that. Well, let's keep moving. I'll talk to you a little bit later in the video. Right, a couple cool things while I was stripping this. I was trying to reveal these stripes for you guys, but it's the whites on there are so thin that I can, as soon as I hit it with anything, it just comes right off because uh, it's just worn off, and that's why they kept painting over it. But you can see that they did the red first, and they just taped off these areas, and then went down to here, and then painted this part white. I guess that's what I gotta do. Uh, so anyway, that's that. Another thing that's weird, maybe you guys could tell me what the heck these are. This was a tube. And I guess it's a tube because it's just rot rotten. And here's the other part of it right here. That was right here. You know, I thought, what the heck does that thing do? I have no idea. Getting these bolts out of this stuff is the hardest part. I knew it would be. Stripping the paint, you know, isn't really that hard. It comes right off with a, I'm using a polisher with 60 grit. After doing the stripping, it comes right off. And then it's just got all these cracks. And I think what I'm going to do is just grind them down low and just fill them. It, it, it is some sort of a gel coat. I don't know what the heck it is, but... It's like Bondo because it's, look at how pinholed it is. Get you guys up a little closer, you can see. Now look at all the pinholes in there. Tons of pinholes in it. And that's not the fiberglass, this is the fiberglass right here. So, I got you guys up really close to see that. Um, so, I'm trying to figure, it's all over. It's And it's original, it's not repainted I'm sure that this red is original and that's original and then this white was put on that's the original white but whatever the heck they did I don't know maybe it's really old gel coat maybe that's how they made the gel coat was like a bondo when they first started making it I don't know because it's really weird it's got a lot of pits in it I don't know I've never seen gel coat like that so well, I'm asking. Maybe somebody knows. All right, there you go, guys. I kind of give you an idea what it looked like. Let's do some stuff here. We'll measure out some of these stripes just to kind of get an idea how they did it. I'm sure I won't get it perfectly exactly the same. 
but this was three and three quarters here they were all three well three and seven eighths three and seven eighths this one in the middle was four and a quarter you see they they probably didn't measure they just guesstimated this one's three almost four let's look here yeah that one's four four and a sixteenth and this one I know is three and three quarters I measured it if I find a spot that's got paint on it so three and three quarters over here so yeah they kind of guesstimated the stripes just like I thought you know we whenever we did stuff like this in the shop we would we'd kind of just look at it you know everything was highball just like when I did these brackets the reason I did that is because it doesn't matter once it's on there once that baskets on here I just need it to be ballparked you know semi square so that when I put the basket on I drill through and I can find that bracket that's all I'm looking for because when it's up in the air you could never see if that's square or not so now what I'm gonna do is just try and find the cracks I mean I'm definitely not gonna get them all and I'm not gonna try to I'm not gonna get stressed out about it I'm just gonna try and catch the ones that I can so I'll just like there's one here there's a big smash in right here and I, I've ground down into the it just goes through the the gel you can see it here and I, what I'm gonna do is just gonna grind those areas down and then just I think I'll I, I think maybe I will actually get some fiberglass reinforced filler I don't like to use it um, if you ever do need to want to use that the best thing to do is just take your polisher and whatever some 60 grit 80 grit 40 grit whatever and just knock it down and then just fill over that so that's probably what i'm going to do i'm not going to try and sand that stuff this stuff sands terrible so and it, it and it's itchy it's just gross i don't like to use it but i'm thinking it might help keep it from cracking right away i'm not sure yeah maybe maybe not i'm not sure might might not do a damn thing other than just filler uh, if I'm using AG 47 which has some flexibility to it you know for stress panels so it should that should actually work too but you know I'll put that stuff on here to kind of whatever that thing was I, I don't know maybe it was a light inside there that's what I'm thinking in See, they got two holes down here, and there was nothing inside, I don't think. Yeah, just two holes. There's, whatever was there is gone. Hmm. And here's the remaining of that bracket thing. There was like, this part was a partial. It was on this side. Like that. It could be like they had a light in there, and then... You put your work order below it? I, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm totally guessing. Anybody has an idea, it might be cool to know what that was. Got rid of all that peeling here. Then I think I'm just going to prime this with some polyester primer. And because polyester, I think it adheres better to gel coat. You know. A lot of guys will say, oh, epoxy it, because epoxy will seal it. Um, you know, look, they say epoxy will seal it. The fiberglass is starting to break down. This, this fiberglass is so broke down. <laughs> you know, in old Corvettes and stuff like that. That's, I don't like Corvettes. When people go, oh, what? You don't like Corvettes? I'm like, no, I don't like fiberglass cars, period. I don't like working on fiberglass. I, it just doesn't last long to me it just has a lot of issues and i'd rather just build it out of metal i don't know why corvette's still building cars chevrolet is still building cars out of fiberglass I, they should just start making them out of aluminum and then just eliminate the whole idea that you make it the new corvette aluminum car it'd be great it'd be the best thing ever get rid of that fiberglass 
or carbon fiber I guess if they really want to step it up but I don't like that either I'd rather have metal you can repair metal fiberglass yeah you can repair it but it just doesn't it never is the same when you repair it it's never the same but anyway we'll start grinding these down I'll get some filler shove it on here see what happens all right, so that's what that looked like. I put in the short strand, which is similar to the kitty hair Bondo glass. I guess they have one that's even finer than this, but that's what I was thinking I had, but this will work. It doesn't matter. This will reinforce it a little bit. gives you some fiberglass reinforcement so the cracks won't come back quite as quick. And then uh, this stuff does not, if you're thinking this is like, stronger than fiberglass no it, it's not not at all uh, it it is kind of stronger than it than bondo but a little bit stronger than bondo it's actually quite a bit stronger than bondo but it's not as strong as fiberglass is at all so all i do is just put a little that on there kind of replace the gel coat with that and then sand that off put filler over that and then we're going to call you know, go ahead and sand this down real quick and be done with it this section and if you haven't bought this stuff in a while this stuff is way more expensive than it used to be unbelievable I remember it was like eight dollars for a gallon eight to ten dollars for a gallon of Bondo and this stuff is about 25 now it's like whatever filler is I've seen filler for still for 13 15 bucks that cheap stuff and then this stuff's like I don't know, I think I paid $18 with a discount for that quart. And then a gallon, I've seen up to $100. That's crazy. We'll teach this thing a lesson. 36 grit. Now, for some 80 on the electric polisher. So here's what we got. It's good enough for underneath. Yeah, there's stress cracks everywhere and they'll be there. It'll be just fine. Because truthfully, we're just not going there. Not under the underneath. Yeah, I just used a little 36 on the orbital. If you guys don't have one of these yet, really, it's so much faster than air. It really is. And it does a really good job. It's really easy to use. So, one of these, uh, this is the Chicago Electric, but they have ones on Amazon that are probably even better. The, they have the, only the bower now, so anyway. All right, let's give it a feel. It's a pretty wavy. We'll just pretend we didn't feel that. Because when the stripes go down here, it's going to distract all that. All right, well, I got this thing here painted. And... Uh, yeah, that's all white. I put a lot of clear on it so that, you know, you can get in and out of it. It won't damage it too quickly. Got dust all over everything. It's not paint. It's just dust. So, yeah, this frame's looking pretty cool. It's all done. Ready for the bucket when it's ready. That will be a while, I think. I got these two sections stripped. And I just puddled the primer on. I used uh, the polyester primer on all of it. That way I can just push it into all those cracks and everything. Yeah, it's going to crack again. I, I'm not worried about it down here. Just want to paint it. And then 
it'll get cracked again on the bottom because people when you get in and out of it it's going to move and all that and i just there's a lot of pinholes in here and stuff so i just puddled it in the pinholes to make it a little easier on myself and i'll sand it all off nice and smooth and then just paint it not going to go crazy on this thing but when the stripes are on it it'll look really cool well the bummer is i'm not so sure if i'll be able to save this thing these, these buttons are all decrepit i'm not sure there were some of them that were kind of sticking i don't know i'll try but i mean worst scenario is i could make a nice little metal or aluminum box and then uh put you know momentary large push buttons inside of it and put a light on it like that like it originally had and i don't think i'll use this i don't know if i'm going to use this key or not i don't think it matches the truck i haven't tried it yet but we'll try it and uh see if it uh, <laughs> these things are pretty shot i'm not sure if they're gonna work but and this thing's all falling apart you know this plastic is shot completely shot i'm gonna have to coat the whole thing with uh i have some like plastic repair stuff that's like it's just like um basically j and b weld but it's in a caulking tube and I could just put it all over and trowel it all over the outside and sand it. You know, it could be done that way. Just, it's like Bondo. You just put it all over everything, sand it a little bit, put it all over it. And then I could just sand it. And then it's like, basically like using JMB weld to repair something. If you've ever done that, I don't know if you have or not. I moved this thing a while back and a bird got in here and couldn't get out. He just made a mess out of the inside of this thing I guess the window was just barely open over there and he got in here and just pooped himself to death and uh, made a fun clean up mess for me no big deal I'll just clean it all out of here but he's back behind the seat he didn't make it he's down there can you see him I saw him a couple days ago. It's kind of dark back there. He didn't make it. He got behind the seat and perished. So anyway, that's that's what might happen here. So I'm not sure. Anyway, it's not like those things. It's just so fragile. I don't know. Put it away and take a look at it later. I'm ready to mess with it. It seems like a lot of work for just one little thing to look original. And, uh, and all the button covers are all screwed up anyway, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. And we'll get going on this thing here. I'm going to, I don't know, this thing's so hard to move around. I might just want to finish it. Just stick it up there and put it up there again because it's heavy it's i don't know how heavy this thing is i was going to get a scale out stick it on it but i don't think i got a scale big enough because see it has this hole in the middle so i have to put something underneath it put it on a scale and it's heavy to even do that it's it's well over 100 pounds i just don't know how heavy i mean it could be 120 could be 150 i bet it's up there and maybe even more because i took it off there it was it was too much so anyway i'll talk to you in the next video please like share and subscribe and see your comments and what you guys think of the next one